God's goodness. God is good all of the time. He's better than you think. He's a good, good God. Good to have the kids in this morning. I think we're going to have a baptism. Yeah? It's going to be wet in here. Is it still wet outside, by the way? Yeah, when I, when, by the time I got here, it wasn't, but I greeted Shannon when he came in, and I patted him on the back, and I knew it was raining out there. Shannon brought it in with him. Move around. Uh, greet everyone in the house and tell them about God's goodness. He is so good. Moving around. Alrighty then, moving back to our seats. Make our way back. Uh, well, there's a vibe in the house. It's Colossians 2.12 as well as Romans 6, 3 to 5, that reminds us that by faith we are united with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. And baptism is such a, a good picture of that. It really is. And this morning we, we're going to celebrate baptism with Trevor. In a moment I'm going to call him up. I just want to read another scripture here. Here's the thing about... Baptism, I, I have a friend here in the house this morning and she's originally from Bali and her parents live in Bali and they have a Hindu background and in December she's going to Bali to baptise her parents. I, I did, I'm just so excited about that because I just sat down and had a chat with her before the service. I knew this was coming. I said, now when are you going? 10th of December. So I, so I can pray for her because when she baptises her parents in Bali <laughs> and they move from being... Hindus to worshipping our Lord and Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. There'll be people around seeing that. Yeah? Well, it's the same in this house, you know. When we baptised Trevor this morning, there are some of you in this house and you are not baptised. You kind of have stepped over the line to name Jesus as Lord and Saviour, but you haven't gone the whole way yet. And my prayer this morning is that you will. Acts chapter 19 Verses 1 to 7. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. Because I've been there, that's not a five minute walk. That's what it sounds like, doesn't it? That took him a long time to do the walk. It really did. And there at Ephesus, he found some disciples. And he asked them, did you re receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, no. We've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Uh-oh. Right there. We need to do some more discipleship teaching, don't we? And so Paul asked then, what baptism did you receive? And they replied, John's baptism. And Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. And on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. And they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Isn't it powerful? You, you see, they, they had a, a form of baptism, and some people do, some people have a, a form that we in Western society traditionally call christening when their parents take them, and usually they're probably six months old or something like that, and I'm thinking the six-month-old didn't really have much of a say in that. Now, we don't want to demean that because the parents meant well, and they kind of were plugging into God as they kind of understood. When you read this, you understand that once you get an understanding that uh, it, it, there's got to be something more than just a nominal tick the box. 
but you as the individual make a commitment to Christ, better get baptized. Give Trevor a big round of applause as he comes up. <laughs> this is Trevor, everyone. He's a tall man. <laughs> I had a visiting speaker here last week, uh, Pastor John Finkeldy. Pastor John Finkeldy's a tall man, but Trevor made him look short, so I'm, I'm in good company. But Trevor came forward last Sunday morning, and he goes, you know, I just want to get baptized. And uh, he was also in the Get Involved program on Tuesday night where we taught on this very matter. And this morning he's going through the waters of baptism. I'm going to pray for Trevor, and if you're okay with this, would you stretch out your hands towards Trevor and call down the blessing of God on Trevor and anyone else here this morning that's considering baptism? Father in heaven, thank you for Trevor. Thank you, Lord, that he's heard the word. It's been like a seed uh, that's found a, a lodging place in the soil of his heart. And Holy Spirit, you've watered that seed and it's germinated, it's put down roots and it's growing. And so this morning, as Trevor signifies his unity with you, Lord Jesus Christ, in death, burial and resurrection, I'm praying, Father, this would be a blessing not only to Trevor, but to those who are witnessing this, that they too, if they have not yet made that commitment, the next step in discipleship this morning, they would decide to do it. They would call out in their own heart of hearts, I have decided. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Give a big round of applause for encourage Trevor as we go over. There we go. Water's nice and warm. Is it warm? Yeah. Boil an egg in there. Yeah. Just, just nice. Thank, thank Jamie Whittle. Would everyone thank Jamie Whittle? He actually warmed this last night, probably while you were sleeping. I don't know if he came down. I have two questions for you. By the way, we get, we'll get that because you need to respond to these questions. The first one is, that you, do you confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and accept him as your Lord and Saviour? I do. And do you promise to serve him all the days of your life in his church? I do. Upon your confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> On your feet, church, we got a song to sing. Heaven thundered and the world was born. Unstoppable God.